this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to WebDAV using rclone and Windows. While Windows supports connecting to WebDAV natively, it's not very reliable. rclone is a much better solution and gives you a lot more control over the files and folders that you see. This is especially useful if you're using something like Synology where their web server software just doesn't give you that much control. The first thing we will do is go ahead and create our WebDAV remote in rclone. I've already done extensive videos on rclone, so go ahead and check out those videos if you're unfamiliar with this piece of software. rclone is a program that lets you connect to cloud storage, where you can then mount that storage on Windows. So we'll go ahead and open up the terminal and create our WebDAV remote. We want to be an administrator to do this, so we'll go do rclone, config, we'll type in for new, and give it a name. I'll just call it NAS because this is what my WebDAV is going to be connected to. And then we want to look for WebDAV, which is already right here at the bottom, 46. You could type 46 or type WebDAV. And then enter the URL for our WebDAV server. Next, we need to set the type of connection for our WebDAV. Synology is not listed here, so I'll just stick with number five and type in the user. And we have the option to set the password. I'll say yes to type in our password. And we'll go with the defaults for the rest of these options. Save and quit out of this. If I now do LSD on the WebDAV remote, I'm connected and I can see all the files and folders at the root of my WebDAV server. Now this is nice and all, but there are files and folders that I like not to show up in this list when I'm connected to WebDAV. I could do some trickery on the Synology where I can limit which users have access to files. It's a bit clunky and I mostly use WebDAV on Windows. So this is where filters come in in rclone. I've gone ahead and created a WebDAV filter text file and it contains folders that I want to exclude from the listing, files that I don't want in the listing, and I just want these folders listed when I'm connected to WebDAV. So that's why I say our clone is a much better way to connect. So the next thing we'll do is mount this WebDAV using our filter. First, let's test it and then we'll create a script to go ahead and manually mount before we create our automatic mount. So we'll do our clone mount on the NAS remote. It will give it the letter drive of J. Now apply the filter from, which is currently located right here on the desktop. Now to use a mount in Arclone, you will need WinFSP and if you don't have it installed, it'll go ahead and run through the installation for you or you can just download it from the website. And that's going to be TXT. Service has started. We'll go to our PC and we see that the NAS has been mounted. Our WebDAV connection has successfully connected. I can go in here and you notice I only have these folders listed where it's before. I had all those folders. Now I've limited it thanks to our filter here. I've been using Arcphone as a replacement for connecting to WebDAV for the last couple of weeks now, and it's been really, really nice and reliable. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and create a script to run this mount so we don't have to always go into the terminal and run these commands. Let's exit out of here with Control C. I'll right click and create a new file. It's going to be a bat file. so. I'm going to name it nasweptab.bat. Let's go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to copy and paste the command that I used to mount my NAS. Typically, we're going to point to our rclone executable, which is currently in my bin folder. So we're going to run rclone, mount the NAS remote or webdav remote. And I'm going to give it the letter drive J. And I want to put it in network mode. I'm going to set the cache mode in our filter. It's going to be located in the desktop here. So we put the full path web.filter.txt. And that's it. So we'll go ahead and save this out. Currently disconnected from WebDAV. So let's run the bat file. And it started. And we see WebDAV is connected. Get out of this. Now that we have our script, we can connect to WebDAV anytime we want just by double clicking and running this bat file. Now that's not very efficient and it's better to have this connection start when you log in. First, I'll show you how to auto mount with task manager and then I'll show you how to create a service where we can auto mount. We'll open up task scheduler. 
and go to create new task. Give it a name. We'll have this run when we log on. And for the action, we'll look for our script. We're going to run a program. And we want to run our NAS web dev bat file. I'm going to give it the argument no console so we don't see the console. Hit OK. Go ahead and test this out. It's currently not running. And we see it's connected. So now when we log in, this will automatically run and connect to our web dab. Another way to auto mount our web dab is with the proper service. This way you don't have to worry about the console window being stuck at the bottom here, the taskbar. We'll be using NSSL and I just did a video on that recently. So check that out if you're unfamiliar. We'll go ahead and create a service using our NAS web dab bat. I'm gonna open up the terminal as an administrator. And all we're going to do is do NSSM install NAS web dab. You can give it any name you want. It opens up NSSM. I'm going to locate the path to our bat file. And I'm going to set the user, an administrator account, and then install service. We go to system services. We should see NAS web dev right here service installed and then from there I can start the service and we see web dev is connected now whenever we start the computer and log in this service will automatically run <laughs>